Well, blessings, 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 my friend, and thank you for joining us for this very special edition of This Is My Story, where we talk to ordinary people with extraordinary stories that God has elevated and is using in these end times. We're so excited to have uh, this great man of God with us. And today I am blessed to have alongside with me, sharing as my co-host today, my God brother, Dr. Gregory Troy. And uh, at the end, he's got a very special announcement he's going to share with us. But listen, I want you to like and share, tag your friends, start your own watch parties, pull over. I don't care where you're at, pull over. And you're going to hear an awesome, dynamic uh, ministry story of such a one that is among us who hails out of the city of Detroit, great man of God, great pastor. Uh, and we thank God for uh, Pastor making the time to share with us his story. And that's what we're going to do. So listen, all of my friends, everybody all over Facebook, all over the world, let's welcome to our platform. This is my story. Pastor uh, Mark C. Holloway, bless your man of God. And thank you for being here and sharing with us today. And uh, Dr. Joy, come on in. Thank you. Good uh, evening, Bishop. Thank you so much for that wonderful, wonderful introduction. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, sir. Great pastor of peace and goodwill. Right That's who we are. In the city of Detroit. Listen, man, uh, uh, when I was planning for August and uh, I said, I got, I got to see if Pastor Holloway might be able to fill us in his schedule. If not now, then whenever we can get him. And uh, it's a joy and a privilege. I'm so humbled that you would take the time uh, to share with us uh, during this time. And listen, we just we just want you, uh, we want to talk about your story. We want to talk about what God has done, what God is doing in the life and in the ministry of Mark C. Holloway. A lot of people see, but a lot of people don't know. They, they see your glory, but they don't know your story. And I know uh, that there is a story. I remember, I got, I got to tell you this, uh, okay. uh, you were preaching. So it was at a BME uh, meeting and uh, during my time in Galilee, you were on when, when Galilee was hosting. This was back when Pastor Chapman was was uh, uh, the state president. Man, I had never heard of the speech. <laughs> okay. I had I heard the name and and then uh, uh, of course I I came to your church at a funeral where oh, wow. Earl's Earl's daughter died. Um uh, uh, Earl uh, okay. I knew that family from way back, and uh, we were there. Oh yes, absolutely. From Hughes, St. James. Uh, yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, but man, at that BME meeting, listen, <laughs> you didn't hold nothing back. And I said, "Well, who is he? Where he come?" <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm born and raised in this city. <laughs> yes. And, and I said it all the time. God is God has raised up these last 10, 15, 20 years, some giants among us. Uh, and I want you, Pastor, to take us back to when uh, you got called into ministry and your church life and uh, bring us up to date. Okay. First of all, talking about being humbled, I am being interviewed by Bishop Andre Sonny Woods. Let's stop right there. Uh -huh. You don't understand how huge that is you really don't first of all being a kid growing up in detroit and being in music ministry you and rudy stanfield and people like you, you were our celebrities so to be on this uh live with you first of all it's just got me on 100 i'm like <laughs> tremendously I mean, people don't know. And then the opening song, you would play without God. You would play that. This is what we grew up on. Oh, man. Uh, Bishop Andre Woods and Chosen singing without God. You know, it, it just, 
it just does my heart good. I'm gonna give this quick testimony because I have to do that because uh, this is like an awesome opportunity for me. So I was preaching on Facebook. Uh, it was aired on Facebook Live and I ended up singing uh, Faith by Vanessa Bell Armstrong. Oh. And I made a mistake and said that Tommy Whitfield wrote mm -hmm. it. Boy, man, my inbox was on fire. My phone was, <laughs> they was like, that is not Thomas Whitfield. That is Bishop Andre Woods. So for all of the world, I apologize because I misattributed the song Faith, one of my favorite songs. Bless uh, you, man. Bless you. Phil. And that was supposed to be none other than Bishop Andre Sonny Woods. But now let me tell you what makes that story so significant because the devil didn't want me here, Bishop, and I'm going to just tell you. As a kid, I was in the living room and we used to have, you know how you used to have those mirrored walls. And I would be in the mirror directing the choir, have the music playing. And I would walk to the front door, look out, walk back and forth, direct, sing, dance. And Vanessa Bell is on the radio singing Faith. And I'm blasting it all through the house. This last time I walked away from the door, gunshots started firing through the windows door. This was before we called them drive-bys. Yeah. And I fell to the floor, started calling on the name of Jesus. My parents were upstairs. They came down. I'm in the floor. Don't know if something has happened to me or not. Even when the police got there, I was still worshiping God. That song is so significant. And just even thinking about my faith walk in that song and how my life was on the line. And I can see, and it gives me chills to even think about a hole almost the size of my hand right in the center of the door where I was standing literally a second before the bullet started flying through the house. And the whole time, Vanessa, and I've told her this story, this whole time, Vanessa is singing faith, that can conquer anything. So I bless you for that song and the woman of God that sings. So I just had to get that out while I had a chance. Bless you, man. Bless you. <laughs> so about my journey, um, I knew as a kid I was a preacher, but I mean, what do you do with that information at 10 years old? Um, I didn't know any kid preachers. I didn't know to say anything. Uh, I used to just be in my room with my Bible on the dresser preaching and stomping and jumping up and down everything that I'm doing now. Um, I was born and raised, and a lot of people don't know, I was born and raised in Peace and Goodwill Baptist Church. Uh, this is the church where my family joined in 1964. And so Peace and Goodwill is pretty much all that I know. Um, our pastor passed away in 1998. And I started my own church in 1999. I pastored uh, New Love Ministries, the church that I planted for 10 years. And I ended up coming back uh, to Peace and Goodwill as pastor in 2009. Uh, I think it was 80 votes, 80 or 85 votes uh, that voted me in. And we have grown the congregation to over 1,300 uh, in the last 10 or so years. I guess we're 12 or 13 years now. Uh, and it has just been tremendously amazing, not only to be a part of something as amazing as the church that I pastor, but to know where it came from and to have been a part of that. Uh, it just does my heart wonderful. I still have mothers on my mother's board that were the mothers when I was a kid. Um, and it's just awesome to see uh, the legacy and standing on the shoulders of our founding pastor and to see what the church has become today. It has just truly, truly been amazing. Uh, and even with the um, pandemic, you know, we came back to peace and goodwill. We could sense that something major was going to happen, but no, we never saw this. Uh, I always had dreams and visions of doing what I do, but I never knew how or when it would come about. 
And even in the pandemic, the church just began to uh, just explode and just God began to explode for us. Um, I have tips, but the only secret I have is God did it. That's all I got is just that uh, God, God did it. Uh, it's been a tremendous journey. It has not been an easy journey. Uh, you know, I've gone through a lot. I've gone through loss, uh, just as anybody else. I'm not exempt from anything. It's just that uh, I, I just do what I was raised to do, and that's give it to Jesus. And even now, uh, I minister to myself. I just give it to Jesus and let the Lord handle everything that I can. And um, I'm just so grateful, honored, and humbled. Uh, to do what I do to pastor and I'm traveling even now. I just, you know, just love everything about who God is and what he has done in my life and ministry. And when you have been born for it and God uh, entrusts you with what's his, you know, you got to give it all you got. And that's what I do. If I get up to minister in song, if I get up to preach whatever I get, I'm going to do it like it's my last time. That was my mama's testimony service song. This may be my last time. I don't know. So whenever I get up and minister, I'm going to give it my all. If I'm going to pass to the church, I'm going to give it my all. And uh, that's pretty much where we are now. I'm not um, that old of a man, but I've been doing this for a long time. I started preaching. I was 20 years old, uh, but I started a community choir uh, in 1988. Uh, so I had that group for 10 years. I was 15 years old and I ran the community choir for 10 years, singing around the city of Detroit, singing at the colleges, uh, musicals and all that type of stuff. And uh, when I started pastoring, my, my pastor told me, he said, you don't have to let the choir go. So I let the choir go after 10 years and I took all that energy and uh, my church choir have to suffer through that part. But uh, I stopped the community choir then. And that is, that is pretty much my story. I'm the uh, father of Mark Ethan and Aaliyah Holloway, my son and my daughter. My son is 22 years old. My daughter is 21 years old. And, uh, you know, we're hoping and praying that they will follow in the footsteps of ministry and carry out the calling uh, on their lives. And uh, hey, we just gonna see what God is gonna do from here. I just believe the best is still yet to come. Uh, oh. Biggest testimony of late that everybody knows and sees is that Peace and Goodwill purchased a new campus yes. right smack dab in the middle of a pandemic. When I tell you that's a story in itself and I can give you some more of that, I'll let you jump in now, but I just wanted yeah. to bring everybody up. And I know I'm not famous, everybody don't know me, uh, but God knows my name, amen, and I, I just do what I do, and uh, you talk about when I preached at Galilee, do you know how hard that was to preach at Galilee, Robert Smith is sitting there, tell us Chapman is sitting right there, yeah, man. I had no choice but to preach, yeah, man, <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 come on, Greg, and, and, and now see, you've been, you, I, I love it, but you've been too humble, too laid back, not only, Ladies and gentlemen who don't know, but I know a lot of you do know. Matter of fact, I, I picked out one of your members, Lakeisha, said he, he has the best pastor, the best pastor. And they're, they're chiming in, you know, uh, 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 Sarita Patrice, Lena Brown, Deborah Bryant, they're, they're, uh, Deborah Bryant, my pastor, all the way, they, they coming in, man. Uh, they're my people. <laughs> listen. Not only are you prophetic and preaching and have 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 a word, but man, you can sing, direct. <laughs> you know, I tell people all the time, don't ask me to direct nothing but but somebody to the kitchen where the food is. <laughs> you direct, I mean your concerts and and, and your services and the time you work with the choir and and uh, it's 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 awesome, man, and and I love that you know because they're they're not well I ain't gonna say there's not a lot but I've dealt with 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 churches with great musicians and had cantankerous pastors because they they made it 
a tug of war between the music and the pulpit. Oh. Yeah, they, they wanted a good choir, but they didn't want them to sing too good. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh man, I'm telling you, man. And I keep trying to tell these guys, listen, listen, listen. Uh, it's more in the Bible about praise and worshiping God than preaching. So uh, they got to work hand in hand. We know we got to get the word out. But man, you are a phenomenal uh, uh, word bearer, a messenger from God. But a psalmist, I mean, a, a minstrel that's anointed. And uh, if anybody didn't know, tell them about your project. I mean, your uh, your CD and all that kind of stuff. I mean, no, you know, I tell folks, forget the Grammy, forget the Stella and forget all that. All that's fine, that's nice. But I tell people all the time, there's so many people, not only in the city of Detroit, but around the country, are some of the city's best kept secrets. Yeah, this is true. Absolutely. If the world only knew of a Mark C. Holloway and the gifting and the anointing that's on his life. I mean, uh, but I thank God for this pandemic because it, it leveled the playing field. So we all- Yes, sir. We all mega churches now. <laughs> <laughs> so true. You tell the truth, Bishop. Yeah, you got a question for Pastor. Well, Pastor, this is Dr. Gregory Troy. I um, I've heard of you, and I'm looking forward to hearing you more. I can't remember right now the former pastor's name or peace and goodwill. I had occasion to meet him, and we were both hospitalized back in the day. And I never forget um, that we were talking and communicating about the church. He he didn't think I knew it because before then I was playing down the street at Mount Pleasant. And okay. then I knew about the church. And Pastor and I was in there with with some heart issues. And I remember um, I did the stress test and he had to do it and he was like, I don't know if I can make it. And I said, yes, you can, Pastor. But I remember the former pastor. So I'm looking forward to you, my brother, hearing you and being in your presence. And I know you got to be phenomenal for my brother to bring you on. I, uh, you got to be <laughs> somebody's preacher, somebody's singer, whatever. So I'm looking forward to meeting you and I'm here what the Lord has gifted you to give to your people. And so I say congratulations, bless you. Thank you. And um, Dr. Troy's right there with you. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Well, listen, listen, Pastor, tell me, uh, when, when I first saw the announcement, because we used to do years ago, uh, a friend of mine, he, he since uh, passed on, but his daughter used to go to the school at that church that, that you all now uh, okay. own, and um, they would have community stuff there all the time, and we would be in there. We always talk, oh, that's such a beautiful man. Lord, I hope one of our pastors if they ever let this building go, it would be a wonderful. And, <laughs> and when 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 the announcement came, uh, I was I was telling Sherry Car Sherry Jackson Car, I said, "See, look at God. <laughs> look, at God. look at what God has done." And man, talk to us about that transition in the middle of a pandemic. Oh, uh, man, this was nothing but a miracle. Um, as I stated, we came back to Peace and Goodwill in 2009, and we started ex experiencing, I was elected pastor in May of 2009, um, so the first Sunday in June of 2009, this is my first Sunday as senior pastor of Peace and Goodwill, um, and we started, you know, a lot of older members started coming back, you know, the people that I was raised up with in the choir, they was like, what, you coming back to Peace and Goodwill? I'm coming back to church. So there was like this influx of our former members coming back to church. It was almost like a reunion. And then by the end of that first year, we noticed the church really started filling up. I was like, okay, God, you know, what's really going on? You know, I was like, okay, well, this is just new and exciting. So people are just coming. So then when 2010 came in, now people are standing on the walls. We're putting chairs out. We, have, we would open the doors of the church and 
10 people would join and we would shout like crazy. Next Sunday, 10 or 11 or 12, I remember 21 people joining at one time. We were baptizing 15, <laughs> baptizing 17, baptizing 21, and it was just getting out of control. We, we had nothing in place, um, never experienced this before. We didn't have a new membership program. You know, so we were just behind the eight ball, just trying to make room and make stuff happen. Of course, we had issues with parking. We had issues with seating. So I said all that to say, we started growing out of our old facility uh, within a year's time of me coming back to Peace and Goodwill. So this one Saturday in 2010, I am not misinterpreting the year, it's 2010. I was on my way to a 12 o'clock choir rehearsal. And of course I'm late. The choir is there and musicians are there. They're waiting on me. I come up on 94 and Maross and I was getting ready to turn. And the Holy Spirit told me to keep straight. This is 2010. The Holy Spirit told me to keep straight. So I was like, uh, oh my God, what's going on? I was getting emotional. Order my steps was on the radio. I was worshiping God, tears was rolling down my face as though I had never heard order my steps in your word. But the song, it just meant something else to me in that moment. So I went straight, I was like, God, what's going on? What are you trying to tell me? And I couldn't figure it out. So I drove around the block. And when I came around the block, the Holy Spirit said to me, look up. And I was in front of that cathedral and I looked up and it was sitting right there. And God himself told me that that was peace and goodwill in 2010. So unlike typically what we would do, if we have these experiences with God, we keep them to ourselves. And then once everything come to pass, then we say, God told us this 10 years ago. I went to choir rehearsal. They was wondering like, what is going on with pastor? I had tears in my eyes. I said, God just told me that that was our church across the freeway. It was like, what are you talking about? I was like, the church between the school and the grocery store. I said, God just told me that was our church. We started praising God, started worshiping God. People were emotional. This was in choir rehearsal on a Saturday. And they said, well, pastor, what are we going to do now? I said, I have no idea. There's a church there. I said, I don't have a plan. I don't have any money. I just know that God just told me that this was our church. So what I started doing, man of God, is I used to go over there and just drive around it. And uh, mm -hmm. I would say to myself, I was like, well, if I can see it, maybe the God is going to release this to me one day. Uh, and I just said, I would just keep doing what I'm doing. I know I heard God. There was no mistake. I've never doubted that I heard God. So I would go over there and pray. I would get out of my car and I would walk around just like I was taking a walk in the neighborhood. And I would just look up and say, oh, my God, oh, my God. So um, then social media became more progressive and you start being able to check in. So we have the text messages that I sent people. Uh, we have screenshots of when I would check in at Our Lady Queen of Peace. I would, before service, I would go over there. After mm -hmm. service, I would go over there. I could just be driving my car and I would check in. I was doing that back in 2010, 2011, and 2012. So uh, this one day in 2012, I, I couldn't tell you what month it was, uh, they made this big announcement in the free uh, press about all the Catholic churches mm -hmm. that were going to close. This is in 2012. And I was in the bed on a Saturday morning and uh, the person who is my assistant pastor now, just a choir member then, called me and said, Pastor, you're not going to believe what's in the free press. I said, what? He says, Our Lady Queen of Peace is closing. So I wasn't surprised. I was like, okay, well, this sounds like it's in line with what God is doing. God already told me it was ours. So me being the person of faith I am, I got off the phone that Monday. I called the archdiocese. I was like, hey, what's the plan? with this church. And they said that building would have to be closed and sold. Are you interested in it? I said, I am very much interested in that building. He said, well, I'm going to caution you right now. The pastor of the church does not want uh, the building to the church to close. 
And if you go over there nosing around, you know, he's not going to be real nice. So I never went over there, never stepped <laughs> foot in there, but I sent three of our young people over there to go inside <laughs> to look at it. So they went over there, taking the pictures. <laughs> Listen, that's sent the spies. We still got those pictures from like 2012. Mm -hmm. They went over there and the deacons and the priests, they're asking like, what are y'all here for? Have are y'all thinking about getting married here? Like, what do you want? Why are y'all looking around? So I don't want to get into it. I don't know what they told them while they was looking around the church. So in the process of the church closing in 2012 or 13, uh, in that process, there were other churches interested uh, in buying it. People that, you know, that I knew. I was like, Lord, I don't want any of my friends to get this church that this that's this close to me. Um, but before we could even try to make a purchase, now, mind you, we still don't have a dime. We like literally didn't have any money to buy a new building. And this company out of Chicago with very deep pockets came and bought the school and the church, the whole campus for multiplied millions of dollars. The building, it never even made it to the market. So, <laughs> Me being the investigator that I am, I'm trying to find out who owns this building. I want to know the CEO. I, I just need to get in touch with this person. I want to find out what they're doing with this building. So I called our state rep at the time, Brian Banks, who lived in Harper Woods at the time. I said, Brian, I know you know who owns this building. He was like, I don't really know, but I know the company. Let me see what I can do. It took him a week. Mm -hmm. And I was out of town at a conference. And Brian Banks called me on a three-way. He said, Pastor Mark, I have the owner of Distinctive, uh, well, it was Star Commonwealth. I have the owner on the phone. And he said, I want to introduce you. This is Pastor Mark, and this is so-and-so. So he introduced us. Brian drops off the call. So I said, hello, how are you? He said, let me save your breath. He said, I know who you are. I know what you want. And I just want to save your breath and your time and let you know I will never sell you the building. And mm -hmm. all I could do. <laughs> so yeah. I said, well, what are your plans for the building? He said, we might turn it into a, another part of the school. We might make it a high school or we might just make it a community center. We don't know what we're going to do with it, but we're not selling it to you. There was nothing I could do about it. All I could do is continue to do the work that God had called me to, kept on serving God, kept on praising God. We even tried to buy another church in Harper Woods because the church never stopped growing. And then, bip, bam, boom, 10 years later, I was at home working. I get a hysterical call from two crazy members of my church one who teaches at the school, the other on my usher board, they're walking through the neighborhood. And while they were walking through the neighborhood, the for sale signs were going on the building. <laughs> so they called me screaming. I couldn't even tell what they were saying. I was like, you know what? I just had to hang up the phone and say, y'all gonna have to text me. So they text me the information that the building was going for sale. They was like, Pastor, you don't even sound excited. I was like, I'm trying to take it all in. I don't know what God is doing. You know, God told me this 10 years ago. Let's just see what happens. So I was the first person to call about the building. And uh, the building went up for auction, actually. There were 15 other churches that uh, went into the, into the bid for that church. And guess what? We all toured the church at the same time. There was one tour day and we were all there. So everybody got to see who was trying to buy uh, this church. So we're uh, in this bid in the midst of the pandemic. The church didn't have time to come and tour it. They just had to follow their pastor. Pastor had already told them this 10 years ago that we were walking into that building some kind of way. And we won that bid. My God. We won that bid. We scraped up every dime that we had. We called every bank in America <laughs> to help us out. 
because we were bidding like we had a million dollars or well we were bidding like we had 10 million dollars like i was bidding like a boss because i wasn't going on the uh evidence of what was in our bank account i'm going by what god told me yes, so whether uh, the building sold for two million or ten million it did not matter because i knew what god told me so we are bidding and bidding and bidding we won that bid and um we closed on the loan november the 30th of 2020 Mm -hmm. And when I tell you, I had to tell the church on Zoom, we got all got on Zoom. Uh, we knew the, the date and all that. We all got on Zoom. I told the church we won this bid. I mean, the, the outpouring emotions was just crazy. And that's why, because of how God was moving in my life and moving in our ministry, I never doubted during the pandemic that I can't speak for everybody. I never doubted that we weren't coming back and we were coming back bigger and better. I already knew this, the way God was dealing with me. Because when everybody else, and, and this is no slight against everyone, you have to do what you're led and what God is telling you. Absolutely. But what God was saying to me was prepare for masses. He said, you got to prepare for masses. So I couldn't listen to the news. I couldn't listen to Fauci. I had to listen to what the Lord was saying. And, and, and I, I started preparing for the masses. So um, we got the building, you know, the building needs work and all this type of stuff. And it was just so wonderful and miraculous how God did this after speaking to me so many years prior. We just knew that was the miracle. That was just the blessing. Mm. The miracle was 12 months later, December 13th of 2000. 21, we made the final payment on the new campus. Amen. Amen. Now we, we, we now hold the uh, property assessed value says $2.5 million. And we do not owe a nickel to nobody. Praise God. And that's where the miracle, because God spoke this, that we will walk in there. He told me that. He showed me that. I never considered, never thought about in my wildest dream that a year later we would have paid it off. My God. So when I say all I'm doing is looking forward to what's to come, because I have no idea what God is about to do in this season. I don't know what he's going to do with me. I don't know what he's going to do with peace and goodwill, but I don't have the impression that God is through yet. So that's oh. my spiel. That's how we got there. We're sitting on six acres. We we parking for over 200 cars, yes, seating for 750, over 39,000 square foot of space. Uh, we have two acres of land that sits behind our church that we own. And all of our activities are there. Our church picnic is there. Uh, all of our outdoor activity, we, you know, we're just not limited in any kind of way as it pertains to uh, a facility and a house of worship. And that's why we praise God like we do. And we go hard for Jesus. We go hard. That, that, I'm, I, I'm still that. one of them shouting pastors. I, yes, I'm still going to shout. I'm still going to give God praise. And yeah. that's why musicians too. I, I know that's right. This is. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm glad we're documenting this because uh, <laughs> prayerfully we'll be able to share this uh, with other pastors around yes. the world who need to hear that God is still working miracles. Yes, he is. What a blessing to move in. And now, debt free, don't own nobody on that property. Man, no. that's that's awesome. That's awesome. That yes, is God. awesome. But, but it's because of obedience. God give provision for the vision. And, yes, and, and just look at the time span. God told you this back 10 years or so ago. Yeah. And, and, uh, I think people get impatient when they don't see it happening within their time frame. But God, they that wait upon the Lord, my God. They that wait upon the Lord. Man, I appreciate you sharing uh, that story step by step because uh, you blessing me tonight. I tell you, God. <laughs> my God, my God. We were at a meeting earlier. My God, brother, he was there with me. I was, you know, I, I do this thing to try to encourage pastors.
from my experience. And I'm like, y'all, y'all got to get this. You know, uh, uh, God is ready to pour out and and provide. I mean, yes, he is. The wealth yes, he is. Is, of the wicked is laid up, and and uh, yes, sir. But y'all need to hurry up and get in line because uh, yes. when I say get in line, get in line with His Word. Just be obedient to what God is going to say or do. Uh, and he wants to do it in us, with us, and then through us, and for us. That's Amen. what I love. And I found out, man of God, it's not hard to get something from God who wants you to have it anyway. Yes, yes sir. sir. Now that's the truth. Well, <laughs> listen, man, tell me, tell me about uh, 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 that, that, that first full worship service, that experience going into the new place. It was, I don't even know what to say. It was so emotional. Uh, we did a ribbon cutting service because we couldn't move right in. It was a pandemic and uh, Peace and Goodwill was closed. So we didn't have the first official service. I was doing virtual services from there by myself and the media team. Uh, it was Resurrection Sunday of um we bought it in 20 so i get the years mixed up with this pandemic it was resurrection sunday april the 4th of 2021 so you had the emotions of the ribbon cutting the emotions of it being resurrection sunday and us walking in there for the first time it was just yeah. and of course the people were everywhere we had screens yeah, outside yeah, yeah. uh sanctuary was full we praised God like never before. It was just, it was just amazing. It was just amazing. Awesome. 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 And uh, I think the service probably was about four hours. I preached so long, I ended up sitting on the marble communion table. Uh, <laughs> and they have pictures of that. I was like, I wanted to get y'all out of here. I was like, I have been preaching to empty pews for over a year. And I was like, y'all just got to bear with me today. So <laughs> I preached for about an hour and 45 minutes till I was sitting down still preaching. So they hung in there with me and it has just been a wonderful, wonderful journey. And uh, we're still looking for great things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, when, when, I, when I can get out and get physically fit like I want to, I got to just come in and, and dance on their marble floor. Listen, <laughs> listen. And so our, our sound system has been on back order for a year. Uh, and I'm telling you, uh, the stuff spoke has already started to come in. We're hoping by uh, mid-August that our sound system will be in. So we have not done a lot of hosting of anything because we're so challenged. When right. you have a dome that's shaped up like that, you know, we have a lot of sound challenges. But once we jump that hurdle, you better believe. I yeah. believe in Friday night service, third Sunday and fourth Sunday musicals. So it's just a matter of time. Yeah. It's just yeah, a matter man. of time. And we have yes. plenty of space to spread out and people to feel like they can distance. So yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm just waiting for the right time. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Well, well, I, I'm telling you. Uh, God, a lot of people try to say God has his favor. Well, he's dealt every man a measure of faith and you did your, your faith walk. Yes, sir. Held on, and now we see manifestation of trust in God. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I, and I hope y'all listening will get that. You got to trust God. Yes, you God do. God speak something to you. Uh, as pastor has testified to us and shared the night, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is mm -hmm. that he should yeah, repent. Yes, what yes, God yes, has yes. promised, it shall. Come it shall. did. Come to right. the <laughs> It did. We, 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 we did. see it. It's a tangible blessing. Well, listen, pastor, I, I, I know. Now, how many years has it been in ministry for you? All right, I need a calculator. So I did. I preached my trial sermon April 17th of 1994. Mm. So I've been ministering since 94. So 2024 would be, that's going to be 30 years. Yes. Uh, so I'm, I'm 28 or 29 years preaching and I've been a pastor for 23 years. I started pastoring 
January the 1st of 1999. So I've been mm. a pastor for 23 years and I've been a preacher for 28 years. What a blessing. What a blessing. Yeah. It's, and to be as young as I am, isn't that something? <laughs> to only be 30 years old and been preaching for 28 years? It's just... <laughs> a whole life. Well, well, you know, that's what I tell folks. Don't let the great fool you. I just started young. Don't let the great fool you. I, 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 I dyed this class. gray. I put this gray in here. Yeah, I like yeah. gray. I, I just grayed there. early. That's all. <laughs> Man, this, 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 uh, story this is phenomenal. a blessing. Well, well, Pastor, let me ask you, in the climate uh, that the church is in, we, we have seen a lot of things that have transpired in the church. Have, have we lost our savor or have we lost oh, yeah. our saltiness? We are the salts of the, of the world. We are the lights. Uh, has the church lost her influence or is the church being influenced by the world? That question, it has so much pain to it. Wow. And we, 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 have, we have lost, we, we, we have lost. And it's partially due to this culture that we live in. Uh, the church as we know it was birthed out of a necessity. And now we have to learn how to do church. And it's an extracurricular activity for everybody. Yeah. Uh, see, when I was growing up, church was God. And if you wanted to go to heaven, you had to believe on the Lord Jesus, which meant you couldn't do that without church. Yes, so yes, this yes. was my vehicle to salvation. But now we live in an environment where it's optional. So because it's optional, those that work in ministry, we are working in ministry and it's from a different passion than what it was before. We, ha we have passion about gifts. We have passion about vision. But we, we got into trouble when we lost passion for salvation. Mm. And, and I know everybody thinks you can stay at home, yeah, and still yeah. be saved. You can read your Bible and still be saved. But you got to read the whole Bible. You can't just read the no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You can't just read I'm the head and not the tail. No. And God gave some pastors teachers, evangelists, prophets, for the perfecting of the saints. Why did God do that? Because he knew that it would take all of that and more for us yes, to be sir. saved. He knew it would take that. But because we are uh, what our forefathers sacrificed, now that we're educated, we're wealthy, and uh, we're a little more progressed in life than our previous generation, we don't feel the pressure and the, the, the need to be the kind of save that we were in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and early 90s. And it's dangerous. Yeah. It's dangerous because if we don't do something, and I, this is something I say all the time, if we don't do something, we will have no one to leave this legacy of holiness to. There will be no, yes, there's no yes. one, no hands to put it in if we, we're raising up a generation that don't need God. And when I say God, I'm talking about Jesus. Oh man. You 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 must have been peeping in on my wisdom class this morning. I got I do wisdom school and we we're studying five fold ministry gifts. Man, yes, I'm telling you because it's, it's sad that people don't read the whole Bible, like you said, the whole counsel of God. And and uh, the fivefold ministry gifts, to me, I mean, I keep telling them, listen, it's valid, man. You know, yes, it is. We need these gifts operate. When I grew up, my grandfather told us, and I come from a, a Pentecostal non-denominational church, that's my roots. He told us that every church ought to be a spiritual church. Every church 
ought to be a deliverance church. Every church ought to be a healing church. Every church ought to be a praying church. Uh, so, you know, uh, it, it ought not be something like it's brand new. It ought to be a part of who we are as the church, the, the living organism in the world today. Uh, we've been told to come out from among them, be yes. in the world, but not of the world. But I, I don't know where where we lost the, the 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 urgency to preach the whole Bible. We started doing crowd pleasing sermons and uh, mm -hmm. in our conferences and in our revivals and mm -hmm. whatever we was doing. You know, uh, some preachers been preaching to impress other preachers, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Try to get engagements, you know, you're gonna have me come. I'm like, okay, but God leveled the playing field. This pandemic, you know, uh, has brought us all to the same level where uh, y'all, they had to stop this craziness about the 100 top preachers in the country. And, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm like, well, y'all y'all just keep making up stuff to make God <laughs> mad. <laughs> who died and made y'all this this council to nominate who are, who are the one hundred black preacher. top preachers in the country? America, yeah. And, and what is it based stuff. on? What is it based on? Thank you. Yeah. What is, you know. Yes. So so man, it's refreshing to, to, to hear you uh, speak in those terms because uh, if we don't get back to the Bible. Yes, yes, yes. The old preacher said the Bible is right and somebody is Somebody's right. wrong. Somebody's One right. thing for sure about it, Bishop, it is not too late for us. Uh, God ain't going to let us go out like this. And, uh, yeah, he's, still got, he's got some soldiers. Yes, and, uh, you know, the pandemic, it kind of weakened us overall. But I believe that there's a revival. I was saying this uh, at the very beginning of the pandemic. There's a revival that's going to hit the nation. Yes, and, and it's going to be a good thing. This is not going to be some tragedy that's going to come and we're going to turn to God. You know, uh, in time of tragedy is an excellent time to turn to God. But there's going to be an outpouring of the spirit and we will remember the words that I said. There will be an outpouring of the spirit and there's going to be a revival that hit the nation and it is going to set the hearts on fire of God's people. And we're coming back to him because we love him and not because we in trouble. Because you got to remember at Pentecost, there was every man um, from every nation under the heavens. That, that is wealthy people, poor people, middle class. God, there's going to be a fire that's going to hit the hearts of his people. And we finna turn to God out of our love and adoration of yes. him. And not necessarily because we are in destitute. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, I receive. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. 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 I'm ready. Just like they talking about, bring the choir back, bring revival back to Sunday mornings, and every worship service. Every yes, yes sir. Every experience. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 as a as a pastor here in a city like Detroit, because you know Detroit got that reputation. If you can pastor in Detroit, you can pastor. <laughs> I, believe know, that. Yeah. I believe that. I believe that. So I believe that. How, how do you see uh, ministry? Uh, I really don't like that word, but I, I use it because that's what they understand. Culture, these two words, uh, the culture and being relevant. I'm like, well, you know, these 66 books going to always be relevant. Yes. If you just use it correctly and, and under the auspices of the Holy Spirit, you can't help but be rev relevant when you're bringing forth information that should be revelation and ought to bring transformation in the era. But we do know that 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 men are carnal first, and then they're you know secondly, uh, Holy Ghost filled. But I'm I'm just been wondering what's happening to the preacher that that is selling out to titles and selling out to platforms and selling out to money grabs and um, uh, they've, they've turned the pulpit into a cash cow. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's become a profession over a calling. 
Yes, definitely. I get nervous about that. You know, as as do I. I'm as like, do I. Are, are we missing something? I thought this was a calling, as opposed to a profession. And <laughs> and unfortunately, there are those who purposely uh, they will tell you, well, "I went to school. I got I got the alphabet." behind my name and in front of my name. I said, okay, you know, and and I just get nervous. I'm like, but uh, you talk all day, you talk good. I understand a little Greek and a little Hebrew too, but <laughs> man, you know, you, 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 you're, you're like sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. I don't, it ain't nothing, ain't nothing in it. You know, I'm, I'm, I get worried about churches that for whatever reason position themselves and they bring in this kind of ministry gift only to find out it was the wrong choice. Yes, yes. Wow. Yes. It happened. It's it's happening, man. And it's, it has happened. It's so devastating uh to our to our, our, uh, to our churches and the body of Christ. Yes. So Pastor, how what would be your counsel as as a seasoned pastor? tried and true, you've been in the fire, you come out in the fire again, come out again, you've been up, you've been down, you got you got stories you ain't even told yet, you got personal experiences, you got crisis, you got you got testimonies made out of try out of tests and 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 you've been victimized seemingly, picked out to be picked on. I mean, what advice can you give these young preachers uh, seeking ministry time or, or churches or whatever, what would be your ultimate uh, counsel? All right, excellent question. Uh, first, back to the uh, relevant ministry. Uh, of course, the word of God in itself, we know that it is applicable. Uh, and in today's culture, when we say, uh, when it's said ministry is relevant, we first have to look at people don't read the Bible. So because people don't read the Bible and they read us, we, we do need a delivery that reaches people where they are. And so to be relevant, it simply means I'm presenting the message of Jesus Christ in a way where an unchristian or unchurched person uh, can uh, it makes it palatable for them to receive. So I'm not only giving it in love, but I'm giving it where it can be received. When my mama used to keep people's babies, she would get the food and chew it up first and then put it in their mouths. So to be relevant, it means if I'm saying Daniel in the lion's den and a person has never cracked open a Bible and they don't know what I'm saying, I'm cheating them out of a ministry moment because I'm not giving them something that reaches them where they are. What I have learned in ministry, number one, you have to be yourself. And this is what I mean when I say that, because if God called you to be a carrier of his word, he wanted you for you. So don't try to be somebody else. So to be true to yourself is really being true to God. We have to be true to God. We have to deliver this word with integrity, meaning we have to preach what it says. And like Paul said, you know, sometimes he said, this ain't coming from Jesus. It's coming from me. If we're going to isergeet that script, we need to say, this is my opinion. We can't be on social media knowing these folks don't go to church, they only watch Instagram. We can't give our opinion and preach it as though it's the word of God. If we're going to isergy, just say, I'm throwing this in there. One of my, my favorite preachers is the late uh, Bishop Gilbert Earl Patterson. And he would throw things in the scripture and he would say, now that ain't in there. But because it ain't, you can't prove me wrong. So he would say things to let us know, I'm giving you what I feel. I feel like the little boy after the multitude had 12 baskets of groceries to take back home to his family. So he let us know, that's not the Bible. This is what the Lord has put on my heart and this is what I believe. And now today I see so much 
online. I was like, that ain't in the Bible. And it's not even in line with how God operates. So I use terms like we got to get to know the God of the Bible, because when you get to know the God of the Bible and somebody gets up and say something, whether you know you've read it in the Bible or not, you know the character of God. And when you know the character of God, you know when it's not him talking. So be true to God, be true to yourself and deliver that word with integrity. Say what it means, bring out the revelation the Lord is giving you, giving you. But when it comes to your opinion, make sure you're not presenting that in a way that God said it. Ooh, we just heard a son. We it's, it's offering time now. <laughs> Talk, listen, man, that that is powerful. It's timely and absolutely necessary. Yes, sir. and 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 we need more to to echo and ditto and repeat it and say it because, you know, uh, when I when I meet the young sisters and brothers who are going in ministry, you know, I'm like. Come on, get over yourself. You know, drop the attitude. Uh, you know, yeah, you 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 got that piece of paper on the wall. It's, it's nice. I got a couple pieces of paper on the wall too. Come uh, on now. <laughs> but but uh, Paul said, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity. You know, and, and one of my favorite scriptures for the last year, Pastor, has been Galatians four sixteen. Am I therefore become your enemy because my I God. tell you the truth? I'm I'm bound by my calling and by obedience to God to say what God says and to tell you the truth and to tell myself the truth. Sometimes it hurts, you know, yeah. but 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 the truth will work out. The lie will run out, and and uh, and I believe that if uh, in this season, if if uh, our young preachers had more mentors like yourself and preachers that are willing to share and pour into them their wisdom to keep them from making ministry mistakes that they just don't have to make, you know, in making right choices and 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 doing ministry God's way, the prescribed yeah. Bible way. And like you said, if it's your opinion, then just go on and say that. You know, just say that, yes. <laughs> you know, and don't try to spiritualize everything and you know, God is speaking. Well, he done spoke, and that is not what he said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this this has been a... Listen, we can talk all day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the for sure. Of the Lord. I, I just want to appreciate you, man of God. and Thank you, uh, thank you. Thank my brother for, for chiming in and sharing with us today. Uh, Greg, unmute yourself again, and then... Um, uh, but what I want to do, Pastor, if you don't mind, uh, I want to pray because uh, I believe every word you just said in your testimony. And and uh, when we talk about scripture, I have not seen nor ear heard the things yes. that God has already prepared, past tense. And I tell people, yes, yes. God ain't got to make a blessing. He's, he's preparing us for what's already ready. My God, my God. And, and that's what he did in your case uh, in no certain un, un, uncertain terms that he showed it to you some 10 or so years ago and then he prepared you and the church and now you're in there shouting and giving him glory. That's uh, right. In the midst of a pandemic. <laughs> oh, my God. Wonderful name. So I, I just want to pray, and let me let me first of all thank you again for taking. I, I know Saturday is preparation time. Yes, yes. This was Sunday, and the, the meditation time, and sometime with families is is the uh, where you had to get it in when you can with family, uh, and then take the night to meditate and to pray and prepare for Sunday. So I just want to pray, and we want to thank all of you. I didn't get a chance to continue to call names, but uh, Anthony Thompson and and uh, somebody who are uh, uh, to move, I guess I overcome them, Williams. They got these Facebook names, Kathy Wilson and so many. I mean, they just come there, but it's just scrolling up. Sarita Patrice, Teresa Tra Taylor, Denise Hearn, 
Oh, uh, some of everybody. They, <laughs> <laughs> they in there and they're thanking God for their pastor. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank Praise you God. all for your prayers and support of the man of God. There's a blessing in store for you. So I want to pray before we go. And then, uh, uh, Greg, then we'll, we'll, we'll give that quick announcement. Father, we, we're so grateful and thankful, and we bless your name for this awesome privilege. Thank of you, Jesus. We thank you for the man of God. We thank you for Pastor Mark C. Holloway. We thank you for what you're doing in him, through him, and with him, and what you ultimately would do for him, for the body of Christ. We thank you for his obedience in ministry, God, and we pray that you will continue to anoint him afresh and cover him under the blood of Jesus. God, we pray Psalms 90 and 17, and now, Lord, let the beauty of the Lord our yes, God, God be upon him and establish the work of thy hands upon him. Yes, God. Yea, the work of thy hands, establish thou it. So, Father, whatever he put his hands to, we pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will cause it to prosper. We pray, God, that there shall be no lack, there shall be no misfortune, but God, we pray that you shall continue to go before him and make easy and successful his way. Bless the flock, God. Bless the, the membership of peace and goodwill as you line them all together, God, as they follow their pastor, as, his, as the pastor follows you. God, give him clarity of vision that he might hear your voice and your voice alone. Remove every stumbling block, every hindering force that comes against. We bind it in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that you shall open his eyes and be his eyesight, his vision, that he shall see afar off those things that you shall show him. Open his ears, that his ears may hear fresh revelation and wisdom and knowledge that comes only from you. And so God, we pray that on tomorrow as he shall mount the sacred, the death that he shall stand before your people to declare this awesome, undulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh God, make his tongue as a fire burning uh, in the ovens of society, God, that it shall speak truth to the hearer. And he that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the spirit will say unto the church. That God, as he ministered, God, let the saints be edified and you be glorified. Minister. The devil be horrified in the master's name of Jesus. Now, God, meet every need that yes, God. Holloway has. Bless his yes, family, God. his wife, his children. Oh, God, we pray if there's a need in his home. Uh, bless him now, God, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, financially. Meet every need in the name of Jesus. And God, we already know you've met all needs when it comes to ministry. Everything shall be supplied. There shall be no lack. Oh, God, send him the help that he needs, even the more as they grow, as they expand, as you give him even more vision to the vision. Continue to give provision for every extent of the vision, every leg of the vision that is to come to pass futuristically, God, we thank you now oh, yes, God. in advance for total victory in Jesus' name, and we give you thanks and praise. This is your servant's prayer in the master's name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank yes, you. Sir. In the name of Jesus. Thank yes, you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, oh, my God. Hallelujah. Now, listen, my, my, my. I appreciate you. Listen, do me a favor. Uh, go to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to Bishop Andreas Wood's YouTube channel. You'll be able to see Pastor Holloway's interview on our YouTube channel, on our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. Follow us every week. Uh, my brothers here, we got something coming up very special. We want to invite the world. Uh, Pastor Troy, uh, give us give us that announcement. God bless you to Pastor Holloway. God bless you. I, you encouraged me. I'm just sitting here. I'm going to share this and be quiet. Uh, when you said that, I heard the Lord say, if we walk circumstances before him and to the call that he's given us, not for personal reason, but for glorify him, we will succeed in what we are to do. Many times we get these titles and we walk and serve the titles for ourselves not giving mm -hmm. God the glory, but when you give God the glory, 
I can see why you got what you got. Giving God my, my, Lord, Lord. my, Lord. my Lord. The vision shall come to pass. I, 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 I am more encouraged. I'm so glad my brother did this. My God, my God. I am so encouraged. So I bless you, my brother, that in all your endeavors, I, I bless you. Thank you, Jesus, for the meeting and coming together. What a powerful word. I will not forget that. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Um, um, I have an outreach ministry called Destiny and Purpose International. And uh, what is a community organization that we do things in the neighborhood to help people outreach. A lot of times people would not come to church for whatever reason. So I didn't want to do a church thing. I wanted to do a community thing where I can get out and talk to the people, witness to the people. And my pastor, late Charles Ashley Craig, would say, how are you going to feed somebody uh, when they're hungry? So we give them spiritual so I give, give them food. We have given food away, clothes away, help you get shelters. So on August the 26th at my home church, Craig Memorial, right there on Puritan Outmore, I'm doing our annual revival, one night revival. I'm bringing in my friend and brother from Chicago, Illinois, Rev. Eric Thomas uh, from the Greater Harvest Baptist Church. We wow. started we started this in two night, 2019. Uh, the late Bishop Rand Salem was my guest preacher. And I was Bishop was there. I was so thrilled. And I guess people thought in a sense I didn't know him. He was just talking, but he told him, I've been knowing for a long time. A lot of times you don't hear me preach, but I have that word embedded in me. And when my chance is given, I do. Yes, I'm a musician. I played with the Craigs for some 40 years before they passed. They are my pastors before they passed away. Bishop and I worked on sessions with Rudy and Tommy because of them. So on this night, August the 26th at 7 p.m. at Craig Memorial Tabernacle, uh, the, the pastor Eric Thomas and the Greater from the Greater Harvest Baptist Church of Chicago, Illinois, will be sharing with you. Uh, so I pray that everybody hear this will come on. We ain't worried about we going we got we're gonna be social distancing, going have masks. I got everything in place for you. The church will be sanitized and everything, so we don't have to worry about that. But we're gonna come and, and praise God, and I thank God. For Pastor Thomas, he's a musician who's played First Church of Deliverance in Chicago, yeah. and the Lord called him into pastor it. And he said, "I've been wanting to come to Detroit, so I pray that you, who pastors never heard of him, will come out and hear him, and after him, invite him to minister at your church." So that's yeah. all. Twenty-six at seven p.m. at the Craig Boyer Tabernacle, located on the West Side, Puritan and Ardmore. God bless you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Meet me there. Beat me there, they say. Uh, so listen, friends, uh, Pastor Thomas, you don't want to go on Facebook, YouTube. You don't know who Greater Harvest is in Chicago, oh, Illinois. Boy. You yes. will be blessed. Dynamic <laughs> Pastor Deliverance Ministry. They are coming. He's bringing the choir, too. No, don't tell me he's bringing the choir. Yes, they coming. They coming. It's going to be some too. trouble in there. Yeah, so invite you to bless. Pastor, uh, give our audience how to contact you and your your church schedule of services, your weekly schedule. All right, you can uh, reach me personally on Facebook. Our church is Peace and Goodwill Baptist Church, www.peaceandgoodwill.org. We are located at 20955 Bournemouth Street in Harper Woods, Michigan. That's right at I-94 and Maross Row. And we are live and in living color on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. It is our only in-person service at this time. And everybody is welcome. Everybody is welcome. Listen, you don't have a church home. Get ready now. That's it. Your way. Yes. You yes, got sir. plenty of time. Well, listen, we love you all. We thank God. Greg, thank you for joining me today, brother. My That's brother, the my way, man. I owe you. I'm I'm like Paul. I'm a debtor. <laughs> <laughs> so blessings to you and everybody. Thank you for joining us. All you in the comment section. We didn't get a chance to get back to you, but we love you and thank God. Until next week, next week. Bishop Andre Wood saying, I command the blessings of the yes, Lord God. to overtake you. That is yes, my God. prayer. 
Blessings to next time. See ya. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.